So, you want to do a through hike. You need money to do that, you know? So what you gonna do? There are lots of ways to approach securing funds for a through hike. You can borrow money from friends and family, take a loan from a lender, you could sell some stuff. And then there's always credit cards. In truth, you may use one or two of these in my process, but in any case, you'll need to make a decision about how you get that money and how much you need for the through hike. Hey YouTube, welcome to Hiking a Different Path. My name is Todd, and if you're thinking about or planning a long distance hike, well, then you have found a resource for doing just that right here. Today, I'm gonna to show you five simple steps to fully financing a long distance hike. Be sure to stick around to the end for a bonus hack for keeping track of your spending as you work the plan. The ATC, or Appalachian Trail Conservancy, recommends about $1,000 a month for anybody that wants to through hike the trail. Now, this would include food, lodging, and equipment. It really all depends on how you choose to do the trail. High luxury versus bare bones or somewhere in between. The number of zero days or town stops, where and, and how you resupply. The level of hotel you stay in if you do that at a town stop. All of this plays into how much you need to do a long distance through hike like the Appalachian Trail. For my through hike attempt in 2021, I can tell you I plan to have enough reserves to, well, handle any emergencies or gotta have spa days that may be deemed necessary for the task at hand as well as the life that follows being on the trail for five months or more. So how am I getting together the money needed to do a through hike on the Appalachian Trail? Well, first, I'm not trying to plan for just the hike. There is a life after the trail, and I need to plan for that as much as anything. So this is really the first thing in my process. That's to decide how much I want both for the trail and for after. Maybe you'll go back to work immediately after the trail. Or maybe you'll go back to school. Take some time off to get back to reality or never work again. Absolutely, plans and priorities change before, during, and after a through hike of 2,000 plus miles. What you put in place now may be totally different when you get back home, but the old cliche, if you fail to plan, well, then you plan to fail, will have more meaning at that moment than you know. So step one is map out a plan for how you wanna do this thing before, during, and after. Now, this may take a little time and it doesn't have to be down to the last detail. A rough estimate will do. I would, however, recommend rounding up or overestimating and having more money than you'll ultimately need. Seriously, who's gonna complain about having too much money? Not me, not you, and not the federal government. In the process I'm following, the main goal is to eliminate as much of our debt as soon as possible. I say our because my wife and kids are in this thing too. They aren't hiking the AT with me, but they are part of the life that I'm living on and off the trail. They get a say. So from this point forward, you're listening and looking at my thoughts about debt and my approach to getting out of it. There is nothing original about either of these things. You can find all this same information at the website of DaveRamsey.com. That being said, here we go. Once I decided on the number that we would need for me to prepare for the trail, hike the AT, and then set up life by my design after the trail, well, now comes the hard work of accumulating the funds to match that number. For me, the next most important thing to do is really an emotion hate, deep, abiding, dark, vehement hate. All of it focused on one thing, debt. You have to hate it. Hate it like the guy that gave you a swirly in the high school bathroom. 
Hate it like the person on the highway that cuts you off barreling for the exit. You have to hate debt like you hate your mother-in-law. No, no, not really, not really. I love my mother-in-law. Hopefully she's watching this right now. Love you, Martha Faye. The point is, if you don't hate debt, you'll keep making more of it. Just look at the federal government. Step two is stop spending. Yes, pay your rent, your car payment, the grocery bill, or the daycare, but stop spending money that you don't have. Credit cards are your enemy at this point. We cut all our credit cards up. Now, we're still paying them off, but we can't keep adding to the balances in this process. Ultimately, I believe you can live life without credit cards, but that's a personal choice everyone has to make on their own. Step three, welcome to your budget. You need to make one, and what's more, you need to stick to it. Willpower or stubbornness is key to making sure you can be successful here. Advertisers all over the world are doing everything in their power to get you to spend money on product A, B, or C. You need to recognize it as a money grab by everyone you see. Everybody is out for your money and it's not a fair trade. You do not deserve a break today, Mrs. McDonald. You need to say yes to the budget, but it doesn't just need to be any budget. It needs to be a zero-based budget. In a zero-based budget, you spend every penny of income you have on paper. <laughs> every penny has a purpose, whether it's to pay the electric bill, buy groceries, retire debt, or be saved to pay for the hike. There is no longer any such thing as extra money. Every penny has a purpose, and pennies make dollars, and we like dollars. So here is how you set up a zero-based budget. Now, I'm going to deal with whole numbers here just to make things simple to understand and keep the math quick. The process is the same. You just need to put the real numbers in where they go. So in our example, Hiker A has a total income after taxes each month of $2,000. Start by listing every bill you have. The rent, mortgage, $500. Electric, $100. Water, $50. Car payment, $300. Credit card A, minimum payment of $100. Credit card B, minimum payment of $50. Fuel for your car, $100. Groceries, $300. Eating out, $200. Insurance, $200. Whatever bill you have, you need to list the exact amount or the minimum payment or the average payment for each bill. Now, your utilities may vary month to month, so go on the website, average out the monthly payments, and then round up. Keep track of the total balances of loans, credit cards, etc. You'll need this later for the next step. This scenario leaves you with 100 unaccounted for dollars in this month. This means that you need to give that $100 a purpose. Here's where being honest with yourself is really key. We have a line item in our budget for $100 called blow. We're gonna just flat out blow $100 each month. We don't have to, but it's there for us to do with. It may be an impromptu pizza night out of the blow budget. It could be an impulse buy of some kind, but we account for it out of the blow budget line. Now that you've done all that, step four, look for extra cash. I can tell you of one surefire, never fail, stone cold lock guarantee of a way to get your hands on extra money. It's called go to work. Get a second job, a side hustle, a third job. There is always some work to be done out there and people will pay full degree money to get it done. It may not be the work you want to do, but if it pays, you should do it. Put aside your pride, scrub a toilet, flip a burger, walk a dog, whatever it takes. I've got a few on the side hustles that I do, along with my full-time job that help me pay off debt faster, finance gear purchases, and save for the hike. Also, look for stuff to sell. This can be anything. Have a garage sale. Clean up, clean out, and get rid of anything that you haven't looked at, touched, or used in over a year. Sell so much stuff, the dog and the kids think they're next. Every penny you can scrape up needs to go to debt retirement. 
which leads us to step number five. Step five, once you get your budget done and you're scaring everybody in the house about being sold for cash, now you need to list all of your debts from lowest balance to highest balance. We're gonna do a debt snowball. If you stand at the top of a hill, take a big snowball, and roll it down the hill, as it rolls along, it gets larger and larger. Well, it's the same thing here, only it's green and it's money. So follow me closely. If I owe the department store card $100 and card A $1,500 and card B $750, then I'd list them as department store $100, credit card B $750, credit card C $1,500. Each of these three has a minimum payment each month. Department store $15, credit card A $100, credit card B $50. You'll continue to make the minimum payment, but since you have $100 that's undesignated, you're gonna put that $100 on the first debt, which is the department store card. Congratulations, you've paid off your first debt. Throw your hands in the air, wave them like they just don't care and do that for about five minutes and then you gotta get back to work because you still have bills. Next, you take the minimum balance you were paying on the department store bill, that's $15. Add that to the $100 you had undesignated, which is really designated for debt retirement now, and add that to the $50 you were going to pay for the minimum payment on credit card B. That's $165 on credit card B. This is your debt snowball. Now in just a few months, you'll have card B paid off. Now you roll that 165 into the 100 you were paying on card A, and now you're paying $265 on card A. In no time flat, you'll have card A paid off, and instead of having just an extra $100 a month, now you have an extra $265 a month, all to pay off more debt or to save for your hike. Now, I know our example numbers are small, but we're not talking about small numbers here. In my case, with two incomes, sticking to a properly set up budget and not adding to the debt while you were using the debt snowball strategy, we will have paid off two cars, multiple credit cards, and a whole bunch of medical bills that were staying around so long that they look like pets to the tune of almost $42,000. And we will be completely out of debt except for our mortgage by the end of 2019. That's a little less than two years. This will give us the ability to live the same lifestyle we have now on only my wife's income. This leaves us free to bank my income for all of 2020. The lights stay on, the mortgage gets paid, cars are fueled, kids band payments, meals, all that stuff still gets taken care of. Our goal is to fully fund my through hike and have enough saved to pay all the bills while I'm gone. But more than that, to fund our lifestyle for at least another year after I get home so I can finish books, set up more speaking engagements, and well, just see in general if this whole crazy dream is going to replace my income full time. If it does, then Yahtzee. If not, well, dead man will get a job and then rinse and repeat for the PCT or the Camino, whichever will come next. Is this method hard to do? Well, yes and no. Sure, it's challenging, but nothing worthwhile is easy. I simply point to through hiking the Appalachian Trail. No, it isn't if you have the will to do it. If you can have the will to stick to a through hike, you have more than enough willpower to get out of debt. It's a battle of wills and I will win. So that's the five steps and here's the bonus hack for watching your money while you work this process. Trust me, it is super easy. Envelopes, yeah, you heard that right, envelopes. If you have a parent, a grandparent, or maybe even a great grandparent who lived through the Great Depression, well, you can go and ask them about this one and 
thing is they'll probably laugh at you because this was nothing new to them. They were using this tried and true method over a century ago. You simply put together an envelope of some of the easier to cheat on categories in your budget. I have one for groceries. My personal allowance, the wife's allowance, the kids' allowances, one marked gifts for like birthdays and weddings, and that blow line item I mentioned earlier. At the beginning of each month, go to the bank, get cash money, and put the appropriate amount in the designated envelope. So going back to our example earlier, if your budget for groceries is $300, get three Benjamins and put them in the envelope. When you go grocery shopping, pay for it out of the envelope. When the envelope is empty, you're done. No more spending in that category. Well, why three Benjamins? Well, I found that the larger the denomination is, the harder it is, the more emotional it is to break it. Hundreds and fifties are great, twenties are okay, anything less than a 10, you're screwed. Now you can move money from one envelope to another, but when the envelope, whatever envelope it is, is empty, stick a fork in it, you're done for that month in that category. Discipline is your ally here. The definition of being an adult is the ability to delay pleasure. Not, I didn't say cut it off completely, but delay it until it can be properly funded without causing a danger to your budget or your finances. The beauty of this process for me is that while I'm hiking, I won't have to worry if my wife and kids are taken care of. And secondly, my wife and kids will actually be taken care of. And lastly, we have a financial safety net. If I get injured on the trail, or maybe I complete the trail, but the rest of the dream doesn't work out, or maybe our priorities just change, the plan is in place to help us get past any one of those, and a whole lot more. It's okay for me to chase my dreams, but it's even better for me to ensure my family is okay while I do it, and that we have a plan for after I'm done that will keep us from living under an overpass somewhere. Also, you don't have to be planning a long distance hike to do this. Having little or no debt is a game changer for anyone, everyone. Think about it. What could you do if you didn't have a bill that had to be paid? Believe me, the opportunities are endless. So I hope you found this helpful. And if you did, well, pound that like button for me, would you? Don't forget to subscribe for lots more content to come and hit that bell notification so you know when it's ready. And until next week, you know, take a hike and love somebody along the way.